Welcome back to The Break Room. The Star Wars content universe continues to expand. But will this latest installment live up to the fans' expectations? Ugh! I'm Brandon Barrick. Who cares? Joining me today, we have Maude Garrett. Hi, I'm Maude Garrett. Uh, we also have Corey Jondro. We both have Star Warsy names. I've never noticed that. Like, oh, like, yeah. do you think those are Star Warsy names? Well, that hell of vowels, like Star Wars mm. is vowel heavy. We well, didn't there's a, a lot of vowels. there is a thing that you do. You're supposed to take the first two letters of your first name and the last three letters of your last name, and then like that's your Jedi name, something like Whoa. that. Brick. I'll, oh. I'll take it. Well, <laughs> Mart. <laughs> you, need, you need like a fun ours, apostrophe. Ours got less Star Wars. Yeah, yeah Mart. Because Koi Jandro and Maude Garrett feel like that. I can see those in action figures. You need, you need an apostrophe, like a Maat. Ma Ma or something. Maat. Oh, oh. Koi O. But it's like Ko O. <laughs> Ko like, It's like oh. longer O. Oh. Ko O. It's like a droid malfunction. He, he knows some secrets though. Ko-o. Ko-o. Oh, yeah, yeah, he listens. Ko-o's yeah, full of secrets. Um, <laughs> anyway. We're talking to Star Wars today, and specifically how to make a good Star Wars show. Uh, so if you're working at Disney+, Plus, pay attention, huh? <laughs> uh, with Ahsoka coming out this week, we thought we would look back and try to determine what criteria makes a good Star Wars show. Nobody loves, more than me, a great argument on the internet about yes. a completely subjective topic. I've huh? never had any heat about this topic. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> this fandom is known for their peaceful mm. understanding of nature. <laughs> what they love is just having discussion. Listen, I think that's true of any fandom, though. As a, as a, a wrestling fan myself, I can tell you, no one hates wrestling more than wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's true for any fandom. I love DC Comics. And I tell you, those fans have a lot of handshakes, a lot of hugs. <laughs> Magnanimous, i describe them. Uh, you're going to want to stick around today, too, because by the end of today's episode, we're going to rank all the live-action Star Wars series. Sure. And the results... May shock you. I should also mention, as we have our show today, uh, of course, the strikes are still going on by SAG and the WGA, and we still stand beside the actors and writers and all the content creators out there. Uh, none of this show is being done in promotion of any content from Disney. They don't pay us. They never will, because they hate us. Uh, and everything we talk about today is going to be our own opinions of things, and, mm -hmm. and likewise, we're not promoting anything. We stand by the writers and actors, uh, and we hope that they come to a great resolution to these strikes. Quickly. Quickly, please. Uh, and as we go on today, we're going to have a spoiler-free conversation. All three of us were lucky enough to see uh, press screenings of the first two episodes of Ahsoka. Uh, but we're not going to spoil anything for the show. We want you to enjoy it yourselves. Uh, but before we get into all of it today, should we give a quick little, like, spoiler-free thoughts about Ahsoka? Does anyone want to start? With a little spoiler free, don't don't Treasury. spoil it. Okay. 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 Okay, this is exciting. This is thrilling. Oh. So I mean so you go, because I don't want to. Damn. Great. Okay. <laughs> there are strengths and weaknesses when it comes to Ahsoka's first two episodes. Very enigmatic. I personally think Dave Filoni, this is a love story to his characters mm, yes. that were, you know, animated and he's brought them to life. And right. I think he's done it successfully. Yeah. Um, there are, like I said, strengths and weaknesses, but the tone overall is very Star Wars. Mm. And I think that other shows have kind of had um, ebbs and flows with what they determine Star Wars tone to be. Right. But I think out of anyone, Dave knows what that tone is. It feels Star Wars. Um, it sounds beautiful. It looks beautiful. I think it sets up this season very well. I absolutely recommend watching Rebels prior to oh, a okay. refresher of at least season three because it is a continuation and that story hits the ground running. Oh, interesting. But I enjoyed it. That's I'm a, on team yay. That's a good point. Uh, and if you haven't watched Rebels before... Uh, we're currently doing breakdowns of the seasons of Rebels on the new Rockstars channel. Uh, full full seasons in one little easy to digest video. Love it. Uh, we just put out the season two breakdown. Season three will come out this week and season four will come out uh, soon after Ahsoka starts. But if you don't want to watch all of Rebels or if you just want to watch a little bit of it and get kind of the baseline of the story, you can check out our videos. That's a really it. smart thing to do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Corey, what did you think of Ahsoka? I enjoyed it. Okay. I definitely was the most neutral bordering on, we'll see, uh, of the people I talked to. I did find that I've I've learned to love animation a lot more in the last couple of years. Like animation mm. as a medium has really taken over uh, before. I struggled to connect with characters, but now that I've watched a lot more of it, I'm connecting with characters in a different way in the animated medium. And I did struggle with some of the things that just physically aren't possible in making these characters that gotcha, I love animated, gotcha. they can't do some things. Like it's just not physically possible. Sure. So um, some of the fighting definitely was a bit slower because 
physics. So I, I definitely <laughs> struggled at points to go like, well, these characters I know is like, da, 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 da. and yeah. that might just be on me. Like I, I can't judge the show on, you know, gravity, but uh, I, I do think it does a really good job balancing the tones. I do think it feels like a Star Wars film mm -hmm. in a multi-serialized setting, which is what I've wanted these to feel like. Uh, and it doesn't rely too heavily on things from uh, known lore. Like it's really, if you like Rebels, you will like it and you don't have to have seen prequel, sequel. Like it's sure. really sticking to that corner of the universe. Mm -hmm. And the thing without spoilers that I, I like most is in the war elements, there's a lot of really grounded um, texture to the world. Like there's this entire sequence, I think it's in the second episode where they dive into stuff that would be discussed in a real war zone and the ramifications of things that felt like, oh, there was an actual war here. There are consequences and not just on the human element or death or like, but like, you know, in, in trade and in commerce and in infrastructure. And I really appreciated that it felt like a tangible universe within the universe that is so surreal. Mm. They so put I dug the that. war in Star Wars. They put the war in Star Wars. Oh, there you go. Much the way Andor does, but in a new capacity. Yeah. yeah, I love a little Andor stuff. Uh, for me, I was disappointed to find out that the entire show will take place on Tatooine and they will never leave Tatooine. Again, always. And the entire show will just so be on sad. Tatooine. And this time we're going to learn about Mos Krapska. Uh, yet another desert town with the same fucking buildings. Uh, <laughs> no, they get off of a... Uh, they don't... I don't... Maybe they go to Tatooine. I don't know. Just so sick of being on Tatooine mod. I can't talk about it anymore. Uh, but I will say that the it's cold open sand. to the first... It's cool. It's, it's, it's rough. everywhere, dude. The cold open for the first episode was hot, dude. That was a good time. Uh, that's my spoiler-free review right there. Yeah. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Okay. Let's talk about what makes a good Star Wars show, huh? You got your stars, you got your wars, and you got your characters. Yeah. Done. Uh, yeah. Our first criteria I would like to discuss yeah. is familiarity. Yes. I kind of stumbled that word. Fam <laughs> familiarity. I think that's the hardest word to say. Familiarity? For me as well. F familiarity. Familiarity. Yeah. familiarity. I put our extra L, familiarity. 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 I blame Evan for this. Uh, Evan! You know, one thing with the Star Wars shows, right? Uh, there's always going to be some instance of familiarity. They're building it in this world that we know. Even though it's all of space, we seem to run into these people who all know each other all the time. Uh, but how, how familiar do we need to be? You know, how helpful is it having like a character or characters that we've already met Evan! before? That wasn't even Evan, but I just felt like it. Uh, Wait, let's, let's say that again. Sorry, take it back. Okay, okay. Um... You want me to go back from the, the tippity top? Um, uh, if you want. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about familiarity in Star Wars. Of course, it's Star Wars, so there will always be some instance of familiarity. But how familiar do we need to be? Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, how helpful is it having, like, a character or characters that we've already met and, like, learned about before? Or do you like it if a series comes in with, like, Blank Slate, Tabula Rasa, here's just a new character, you got to learn everything. I think familiarity is really important. It's mm -hmm. how you connect with the characters and it already has the exposition done for you. So you can insert the story in place of that timeline. So you either know what's happened leading up to it or you know what's going to happen after it. Rogue One is a great example of, you know, yeah. what's going to happen directly after it. Um, and so it's like, sometimes that can take all the pressure out of it or it can take like all the suspense out of it because you know. But I think it was such a thrilling story and it was done really well. Um, I do think since we have totally focused on the Skywalker saga for so long in the movies, it's beautiful to um, space it out a little bit. Pun intended. I like it. Thank you. But to not <laughs> have these same characters in every iteration of said characters, but you are looking at different parts of the timeline. Mm -hmm. We know that Ahsoka in this instance is the Padawan of someone who ends up becoming Darth Vader and like the, the implications of all of that. Familiarity, super important, necessary, not more than 50% needed personally but i will say if you're reading the books they're trying to introduce the high republic which is hundreds of years later right whole new slate you know some of the names of the weapons you know some of the planet systems but all the characters are new and i think they're having a more difficult time with that that is tough yeah i mean that's something like you know the old legends books would do a lot where it's like these are all people you've never heard of and maybe at some point they walk by like han solo or something like that but for the most part it's like these are just fresh characters you don't know them at all, and you got to get to know them. I mean, Rogue One is a great example, uh, and even like Andor. Apologies mm -hmm. to Andor, but like a lot of people didn't even remember that character from Mon Mothma. No, Cassie and Andor. Oh. Everyone knows Mon Mothma. I was like, mate, she's the best. Yeah, yeah. many Bothans die. <laughs> many Bothans. They're all spies. It's a planet of spies. 
Um, uh, I do think the show needed more bothans, personally. How many more? Just a few more. Many of them died right. later that down the track. Another... What's their origin story? Mm. How good is a bothan? Not that good. They all died. Anyway, you know what I mean? Like, what's a bothan? Maybe, Maybe they were... They like dying. Do I look like to... <laughs> No, don't they all have very long nose? nose. <laughs> you feel bothan. I feel bothan. <laughs> they I, uh... have a long nose, right? No, they're kind of like uh, lion humanoidy looking. Anthropomorphic. Lion oh, I like humanoid? I, I, like I can't it. picture a single moth. Bothan. Can you draw some mothin on these? Uh... Let's get a bothan up. <laughs> get the bothan. Can we? Yeah, here. can we get a graphic of a bothan? Uh, I feel like I'm on mothman now. <laughs> I'm no one cares bothan. about the bothans, Bob. Many mothman. bothans died to bring us this information. Sorry. Don't know him. I'm picturing Never like the lion from Wizard of Oz now, just like cowardly oh. running around, and I'm not sure if I want more or less of them. What would have been weirder, me trying to talk to you what a Mon Calamari was back in the day before you'd seen it? <laughs> well, it's a goldfish with legs. <laughs> and, <laughs> not a squid, and even though it's called a Mon Calamari. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Just, not a squid. Sorry, um, that was my answer. But yeah, this is something, right, that, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the series, was hugely popular. And I think a lot of people equate that to big characters we know, right? Obi-Wan, Darth Vader, they're in the trailers. So the show's going to be about Ewan McGregor them. was back. I think Ewan that McGregor was, more, was back. Because he was that the was best part thing. about the prequels, hands down. Also, the timing was really great to see him in the age between, you know, Alec Guinness. Like, real time had passed and his mm -hmm. aging allowed for the story to be told when yes. it did. Having Hayden back because he hadn't been acting in, what, 10 years, 15 years. Like, that yeah. was exciting. Yeah. I, I personally would go a little less than 50%. I, I like my Star Wars, like, 20% known characters. Okay. I think we are too beholden to Skywalkers, too beholden to... Somehow Snoke returned, you guys. Like, that is an unacceptable <laughs> moment in cinema history. It's it's not okay to have... Palpatine? A, a villain that has died having no impact because he came back somehow. Like, it was Palpatine. Snoke was, died. Oh, yeah, Snoke died. Pa I got you. Somehow Palpatine returned. Snoke will come back. Snoke somehow. will come he's, back. He's probably somehow back. Snoke will return. Well, but apparently the Snoke was like built in Palpatine's lab. They got they got 50 yeah, Snokes. Yeah, there was like cloning. I it just, but, the, but somehow Palpatine returning is such a weak choice because it undermines not just Return of the Jedi and not just episodes, uh, <laughs> whatever it is, nine, but it makes all of it feel invalid. I say this every single time we talk about nerd content, whether it's in comic books, whether it's DC, whether it's Marvel, every time someone dies. The reason why it's called nerd is because no one ever really dies. Mm. That's the whole Uncle thing. Uncle Ben, that's where it we don't want You know why we talk about Uncle he Ben? Because he time. stays dead. He's Uncle Ben <laughs> is a dead man. You see him, you know and he's going to die. And Gwen properly, like the, the 616 Gwen, stays dead. I think characters then pack. I, I never want to see Tony Stark or Chris Evans Captain America again. Mm. Ever. Because they should be dead. Yeah. And I love both those actors. I hear what you're saying. I love they those characters. To be they should to stay dead, dead. You know? and I hope they don't burn in hell. No, but they're like I, <laughs> I love Wars those is, characters. Star Wars is really good about losing a limb. It's oh, like it's you want a consequence. Lot, Wait, yeah. The hand's gone. So it's face two Marvel because of Star Wars. Remember face two? Well, we were just a limb. yeah. But before we went live, we were talking about back to tanks too, which is just like you know our good buddy Cobb Vant, Timothy yeah. Oliphant. Glad to see that he made it to the back to tank, but it's like. It's tough when people can get shot and, and there's not a lot it's of that. technology. I think nostalgia yeah. has taken over storytelling to a level that it's not like nostalgia anymore. It's mm -hmm. just like fan service. It's fan entitlement versus, it's a little pandering. It's not It's not really like I don't mind even pandering if it's I a like character a little, that I love. I like 20% pandering. Okay. I, just think that's I, I agree with you saying. It's like you can't tell the same story twice. Movies, sequels. You did that. You did the... The Death Star, you blew it up. <laughs> that came back. You did it again. You did the Palpatine. You blew it, it came up. back. Yeah. I mean, they did it so again. don't tell the same story twice. Yeah. But I do admit the characters that we know and love, it's a supporting character. It sets us up. There's mm -hmm. familiarity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There it is. You nailed it. I really it. did. Like I, did, I nine, heard it. Nine. Yeah. Um, I think it's because I'm a Jedi. That's fine. <laughs> um, Episode six, pretty, and pretty then familiar. And you expand on it. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, Mandalorian is a great example of this, right? This was their first Disney Plus live action series. Mm -hmm. And they go with, you know, no one knows who Din Djarin is. We didn't even know his name for a long time. Yeah. But we all know what a Mandalorian is. And so we could kind of put a little bit of uh, knowledge onto it. You know, if they had just gone with like some random character alien as the same character, as a bounty hunter, you'd still be like, well, I don't know what this thing is, who it is. And then they showed a baby Yoda. Again, we don't know who Grogu is at but all. We didn't know his name for a long time. The Yodas. We're familiar with the concept of a Yoda. They and don't even all... have an announced race. Yeah, yeah, they don't have a race at yeah. all. I think they're just people, right? They're, that's a theory that they're a human that lives for like 900 years. Really? Until they, until they had a baby. I think. Yeah, because it came out like a Yoda. <laughs> I don't know. There was what happened to that baby the first when I when years. I was a young lad uh, because like George would never let uh, 
Uh, I call him George. Uh, George would never <laughs> let the expanded universe people write about Yoda's species. He kept it very vague. For mm. he was like, you can write about the Boffins all you want. You can you can have a whole series of books on the Boffins, but like, don't write about my Yoda and Yaddle. Okay, those are mine. Yeah, you can't have Yaddle. Them. That's like his emergency. You know, break glass until you need to, and they did it. Uh, in Book of Yoda's Book or in confirmed Mandalorian. Lord, confirmed male. Yaddle, confirmed female. We, it's all we know. You know. Baby Yoda. <laughs> you know. I don't assign Season gender four to spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think familiarity, like you're describing, I yeah. think Andor does it right. I think that Rogue One does it perfectly. I think Mandalorian does it right. But that's like that 20% because we know the archetypes. We know the characters. You hear a lightsaber. You hear the pew right. of, of a blaster. You get excited. You don't need that blaster to be Han Solo's blaster that sure, they found and picked up. A little like, too much. I don't like when, like, I think the Pirates Last of the Caribbean movies. Why? Solo, because uh, he was I'm by alone. himself. But like the Pirates movies, when they made the third one or, or fourth, I don't remember which, it's like the origins of Jack Sparrow's, like, pockets. I was like, I don't need to, I don't well, need to know no, where that Will came Turner's from. Will son. They kept it in the family. Of course, the that's family. what Disney does. That's what the they family. do. They expand in the, the family. family. No, Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, they definitely, they got a pirate dictionary from like a gift shop somewhere. <laughs> And they're like, any pirate word, it's magical, it's a token, pieces of eight, this is now a thing. Uh, it's a whole Davy title. Jones Locker, it's a whole thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, they, they definitely really drilled down on all the nuances of uh, of what we know about Because the fun of Jack was he like, he you meet him as the ship is descending and he walks onto the thing and then they spend the next three movies like, Ruining He's that. a supernatural you have to, you have god. To yeah, 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 and like, yeah. I feel like Star Wars needs to go towards the High Republic right. or towards these non, I mean, I want Space Boston. Like I want a Bill Burr planet. I mm -hmm. want to see what that guy's doing because that's the best episode in Mandalorian. Right, and that's a lot of Andor, right? It's, yeah. it's the nitty gritty, no no lightsabers, no Jedi. More war, So familiarity talk. with characters, not familiarity with genre. Mm. I want different genres. This, we know we so much about these characters and the galaxy in itself. Tell it through a different lens. Mandalorian crushed because it was yeah. a western. Andor crushed because it was a thriller. When you start spinning the genre completely yeah. in familiarity, that's when it's exciting. And that's what Marvel started to do as well. Yeah. You want horror? Well, cool, Doctor Strange's movie is going to be a little bit more. And Skeleton Key, like hopefully it's Goonies. You know, yeah. I hope we get yep. that 80s Amblin feel because we haven't seen that yet. Those characters that suit that. That's so it. I, I do think playing with genre is something since Marvel owns every, I mean, since Disney owns everything, they can play levels like Marvel was doing. I think the problem that Marvel got into was they were trying to make people happy with Easter egg. They were trying to give TikTokers content, not filmgoers. <laughs> and I hope Star Wars doesn't follow that. Well, well, in that vein, like how much of the original trilogy do you have to reference in your Star Wars project, right? If you think of like the original trilogy as, you know, it is the birthplace. It's, it's the, the fulcrum on which this whole thing is balanced, right? Mm -hmm. How much do you need? Do we got to see a TIE fighter? Do we have to see a stormtrooper? Does someone have to mention Darth Vader? Do you know what I will say? There is so much that's already established in this universe. Mm -hmm. Like we know the vehicles, we know the sure. races, yeah. we know the planets. Stop expanding when mm. there's so much that we still haven't covered in. So it's like, I think that having, keep using TIE Fighters because it makes sense in that timeline. Keep using these races that we're familiar with instead of bringing in 20 new introduced species. Why did it have to be Jakku when it could have been Tatooine? You know what I mean? Like there are- Don't take me back to Tatooine. Sorry. <laughs> Please, keep me off of But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the whole line about sand was about the trilogy. It was like, it, it gets everywhere and yeah, it stays but... around and it's coarse. That is the problem with the sand universe of Star Wars. It's like, we're stuck there. Well, and it's, it's, this weird, like it's this weird thing too, of we're telling stories both before the original trilogy and after the original trilogy. We're so like bound by it in a weird way. I mean, the whole timeline is based on like BBY, right? Before the Battle of Yavin, like after the Battle of Yavin. Uh, and something Filoni has done a lot is the in-between stories yeah. of these tentpole pieces that we know. I mean, I think it's fascinating that between like Clone Wars and Bad Batch, he's really drilling down on like, this is everything that happens in between all these other stories. Uh, and some of that stuff know. is cool because he doesn't necessarily always focus on the Jedi story. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a big part of it. I think it's fascinating how Anakin became Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we just didn't cover in the prequels. Yeah. But I also love the fact that you've got this ragtag group of bounty hunters that have their own entire story in the Clone Wars. It's the origin story of Boba Fett and like who Bosk is, you know, who these awesome bounty hunters are. There's a right. lot that you can do that doesn't necessarily have to be about a lightsaber, you know? And I think Dave Filoni's covered all of that and it's really interesting. He makes it 
It makes it so much more than a yeah. Skywalker saga. We put together some handy dandy graphics to look at uh, the timeline. This is the one before the Battle of Yavin. So this is like, uh, in, you know, mixed in with the movies and the animated series. Uh, you know, Filoni coming in, of course, with like the Clone Wars to show us what happens in between Attack of the Clones and like, Revenge of the Sith. We had our Obi-Wan Kenobi show, uh, which was like just after Solo. Everyone loves Solo. Uh, you know, we have Star Wars Rebels, another Filoni show that's also like kind of taking place at the same time as Andor, which I think is fascinating. Mm. And if, well, it makes sense because Andor doesn't have any sort of Star Wars, I mean, um, Jedi reference yeah. at all. Yeah. It's all about political intrigue. You think they'll have a Jedi in season two of Andor at some point? There's not many at that particular time. But they're everywhere. What are you talking about? There's not many. Well, they keep finding a bunch of Jedi every true. every new thing we get. What if 66 Jedi. was like maybe 66% success rate? Like if you're, <laughs> if you're a clone and the Emperor has activated your chip. Do it, hmm. do it. And he's like. Execute order 66. Righto, mate. Gotta go shoot this Jedi. And you miss, but he runs off and he's scared. You're like, I'll just tell the boss that I got it. It's fine. Like, it's I'm fine. Done. I'm, I'm so growing at an accelerated rate. My heart's I'll just say gonna... it was another one. Yeah, yeah. All look the oh, same. you're looking yeah. for the other one who looks just 62 like 62 missed him. Yeah, I, yeah, got yeah. I, I got him. I got him. Uh, you're looking for Rex. He's, he's, we don't trust Rex. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, these clubs, they did a terrible job. There's Jedi running all over they the were, place. They were a bit older at that stage. You know, it's not like they'd been freshly cloned and they're it's at true. their best. They're growing too fast. Their hearts are a mess. They That's why the drugs. whole operation didn't do well because they were still because they were relying on clones. Mortal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was still the one guy who aged. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the story of George Lucas and Star Wars. I mean, it would be helpful if there was like, if there was a number we were given. Like if there are, there are 26,000 Jedi throughout the galaxy. You know, someone is out there counting them. Like, that's you know, that, that's the thing is if you get that number out, there's someone who's like watching every frame. It's gonna be like, nope, that's not a toy. That's why I kind of side with the Sith. Like well, there go. can only be go. two. The rule of two. But that's Keep it also simple. a lie. That's yeah, we've, also We've had more than two at once. There's always more than two at once. Because otherwise that map would be like five people. Like yeah. that timeline is yeah. only like 30 years. Yeah. Also but, Palpatine being like, there's only two. Listen, listen, Darth. There's only two. I love you. I'll put you back together. There's only two of us. Don't worry. But here's 16 other people I hate. <laughs> They're not Sith. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't jump down my throat, Darth. They're not Sith. Dooku's Somehow just Palpatine. a friend. We play back gammon okay. together. Yeah, yeah. They're just inquisitors, okay? <laughs> don't don't get all angry. Don't get yes, inquisitors. Yes, they've got red them. lightsabers, but they're not Sith. There's only two, buddy. Me and you. Yeah. Just the two of us. That's how it's always going to be. Um, well, we've got lots more to talk about. Darth Vader is the basis for all these lies. Like Hayden Christensen's Darth Vader's like, there can only be two of us. Okay? You can't, you can't lie to Darth Vader because he's got a tape recorder on his chest and he'll just record everything you say. <laughs> that was a lie. Yeah, yeah. Let me play that <laughs> Seven <back> days <laughs> ago. Uh, before we get into more of our Star Wars nonsense, uh, we want to invite you to check out nerdriot.shop where we're rolling out a new line of Ahsoka-based like. cool. content. This is a brand new shirt. It might be on the site now. I don't know. Uh, you got this guy. I don't know who he is. You got this person. I don't know who they are. Just kidding. It's Darth Vader and Ahsoka. Uh, the, I don't know what this one's called. Probably like Master and Apprentice or something like that. Uh, there's also lots of other shirts you can She's check out on the site. Uh, we've got this fun line of like Star Wars based uh, sports teams. <laughs> These are the Tython Lightsiders. Uh, you know, they come in like a fun baseball. Is it? Do they pitch like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're always throwing curves. Uh, can can the lightsiders beat the pitch luck? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but tons of fun new Star Wars merch uh, in, in honor of Ahsoka coming out uh, soon. So go to nerdriot.shop to check out all our merch and support the new Rockstars Network. Uh, find a fun new shirt for yourself out there and enjoy your life. Let's get back to our discussion here yeah. uh, and talk about our second criteria for making a good Star Wars shoe, shoe expanding the universe. Uh, how can a new show mean if meaningfully expand the universe that we already know that is already so big? Uh, is it like revisiting stuff we've already seen and diving deeper on it? Is it going to new places? What do you appreciate most from a Star Wars live action show? For me personally, and this is what's going to, I waited 32 minutes in to say it. Here we I go. know we're going to lose we everyone. Go. Here we uh, go. Jedi. Walk them. I love that Jedi are a thing that we can aspire to be. I love mm. that Jedi feel inspirational. I do not like that Jedi have in some continuity this weird like hierarchy and, and lineage thing. I like that we have, you know, Broom Kid at the end of Last Jedi, that it makes you feel like anyone, you can be a Jedi sure. too. 
to me, Jedi are this universe's superhero that you can aspire to be like. Not everyone can be a Jedi, but you can aspire to be like them. Mm -hmm. So I think expanding the universe in a way that inspires you versus hammering in stuff we already know. So have familiar elements, have the political intrigue, but but inspire hope. Like what I think they were mm -hmm. trying to do with Poe and Finn and Rey was give us a new ragtag underdog group, but having one director make a movie, another director make a movie that felt completely differently, and then the first director come back did not allow for a story to be told. There were some changes. There were some changes. Yeah. They're not a trilogy. It's They're whoa. just three movies that happen to exist <laughs> next to They together. happen Chronologically <laughs> were released, not even yes. set. And use some of the same characters. I just, I, I really wanted to see what Finn would have been. I really wanted right. to yeah. see what Poe would have been. I really wanted to see what Rey would have been had she not had to have a last name because that's to me what Star Wars is is mm -hmm. you loving these characters that are doing these amazing things that you wish you could so I, I don't think the the thing should be focused on is tying it into old things I think it's using old elements to tell new stories is, is where I think they should expand mm. okay I like that I like that yeah something you know Kanan has said on Rebels right it's like the forces inside of everybody so anyone can learn to do it uh, also that, that guy whose name I forget from Rogue One who's the one who's always like, he's not a Jedi, but he's the one who's always like, the force is, I'm strong uh, with the force and the force is with me. Yeah, Donnie Yen's character. Yeah, I forget, no, his, name. I forget his character's name. Chiru? Chiru? Is that it? Uh, yeah. Chiru, Chiru Imwe? We never would have gotten there because all the was <laughs> he, he said it and we all did it. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I apologize. Um, uh, but yeah, that idea that like anyone could tap into it. Um, yeah. I love that. You know, the Jedi are a problem. It's clear. Uh, they are evil and they should be wiped out. But they just need a good <laughs> stoinking. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, the, it seems like they're in a the right direction after uh, uh, the last Jedi, if you will. Mm -hmm. But even Yoda, after it took him 900 years to realize, like, look, this is a mess. This is a little archaic. We, uh, we fucked up. Yeah. My bad. Should have seen this coming. Didn't. Screwed up twice. You should be uh, allowed to have relationships. Yeah, yeah, you should be allowed to have relationships. That would be very helpful. Uh, and preventing a lot of these problems. Uh, do you like it when they expand the universe? You know, do you want to see more of the the myth expanded? Instead or do you going... like the nitty gritty bureaucracy, no. seeing how people run a government? No, but instead of expanding that way, they need to expand this way. Oh. So we need to get the depth of the characters okay. that we already know. Put them in new situations. See them get older. Are they wiser? Mm -hmm. Didn't work the best for Luke, but maybe we're you know doing better with Obi Wan. I think if we know these characters, we want to grow with them, and there needs to be more depth. I think that there's so much room for more depth with Din Djarin. It's like we're on season three, and all we know is that he he kind of likes a little tight. Right. You know, like uh, I feel like depth. Depth of character. Damn I feel, it. I feel like Luke expanding and having a different trajectory, which I, again, I liked Last Jedi, uh, kind of hamstringed Obi-Wan. Cause then they like, couldn't really do anything except like, we gotta make sure people still love him. So it, I, the whole time Obi-Wan didn't really get to make any decisions that could undermine people loving him because of what happened with Luke. But it was so also I, I didn't feel like the depth wasn't allowed to really like, like at the end of the day, he's like, all right, I'm not responsible for somebody to kill, gotta go. And like took off. And I was like, I don't know if Obi-Wan would have done that, but they yeah. had to keep him likable. So they gave him like this weird little, like not my problem clause. Yes, he was also changed to a tiny part of the story timeline. Yeah. Which I don't think... It's fair to the character or the actor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but it gives him a, you know, I I agree. <laughs> it's a little while that Obi-Wan has Darth Vader, a tyrannical monster, at his, uh, as a beat and just kind of walks away when he's like, but? it's not your fault, buddy. And he's like, I like that answer. <laughs> But then I, I think, you know, to, to play devil's advocate, I think it tracks a little that this man then goes and sits in the desert for another sure. 10 years and is like, man, I really biffed it on that one. <laughs> uh, and then when Luke comes calling, he's like, you know what? I'm going to hang it all up. I'm ready to, I got one last... I got one last one in me, right? I think that's what I want to see next is is the the walkabout era. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I, I want to see the guilt of him being like, man. This, you know, there's a couple of years where he's like drunk as hell. Oh, and he's just, having a time. I would watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the sequel I want. Like, because if you he, want to live somewhere, it's Obi Wan yeah, and Tatooine yeah. hammered. Obi Wan never interacted with Jabba the Hutt, did he? Oh, yeah. that's interesting. What I mean, if he had a gambling debt? Oh, that would be great. <laughs> and he was doing the old Kazakh like, yeah. down in Tatooine. <laughs> 
And he lost way too many credits because he was bored out of his brain. And he's got to go kill some kid. people for the huts? Yeah. Ooh. And he's like, Luke's just Ooh. killing some womp rats. We're good. Yeah, yeah. I got time. He like, does a little binocular check. He's like, all right, I got a couple hours. I can go I can go kill someone for Jabba. I, yeah, like, show me that. Kenobi. Which is what I wanted. I make good on your debts, Kenobi. <laughs> yeah. Basically, what we all wanted Boba Fett to be is what you're saying. <laughs> we make Obi-Wan the Boba Fett show we didn't get. Yes. All right, into that. Yeah. You don't think they mean old Ben Kenobi, do you? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's a guys, change your name. name when you're going into hiding. Jeez, that's why he had to change it because of Jabba the Hutt. He couldn't be a known oh, Jedi, okay, okay. so he had to become Ben. Ben In Star Kenobi. Wars, Kenobi's like Smith. There's a yeah, lot of them. A lot of yeah. Kenobi's Kenobi's just running around. Yeah. There's a lot of Kenobi's out there. Uh, I personally, I love like the minutia. You know, the I, I one thing I really love about Andor is seeing how it all works. Hmm. Because uh, I think, you know, there's a there's an easiness to kind of hand wave away a lot of stuff, especially with the movies, because you're like, well, we're following the main characters, big main character syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. Like these people have to be at the most important moments of their lives, the most important days. But what is the day to day like? How does a government, how does a, a people slowly slip into allowing this empire to enjoying the empire being around? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a fun episode of Rebels where it's like, they're celebrating Empire Day. This is the day we started the Empire. And they play the Imperial Death March. Bad name, if that's what you're going to call it. Uh, but they play it in like a major key. So it's like happy. Oh. It's like da, 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 da. And like they're having a great time. Uh, and that's on propaganda. Uh, but that's like the kind of fun stuff to see how, for me anyways, uh, as an old man, like that's, that's what's interesting. Uh, which maybe gets into the, our next criteria. The magic versus the realism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Star Wars is this sliding scale of like, this is the real life nitty gritty. I'm just a- Corrupt government. Yeah, I'm yeah. just a, a corrupt government. I can be bribed. I'm just a, a roguish, roguish scoundrel, scoundrel flying around in my ship that I built and it's dirty and it's greasy, whatever. All the way to like, I'm magic and there's witches and there's the force and there's other magic and there's- Space whales and stuff Rancors. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Rancor, are they magic? Well, you know what I mean. It's like they're very, very different to the political. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. There's like rancor. monsters. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Big, big, scary monsters and stuff like that. So That's what, what do you like on that sliding scale? If Andor is at the, the very practical end, right? And something like, uh, I guess, Obi-Wan or even, like, what's the most, ma maybe like even. Dude, Moon of Endor. Like the yeah, yeah yeah like something super magical on the other end where it's just that like just the episodes of of Clone Wars where it gets into like the witches and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, Dathomir. Yeah yeah witches the sister Dathomir? the night witches. Yeah that's the sick. night sisters. Night I sisters. love yeah. that though. Where it's like not only is there the force, there's also this like magic. Stuff, and that's where like, Darth Maul is from, and right. I'm pretty sure that's also where the rancors rancors came from. Pretty sure. I looked that up. I don't know. Someone I think they came from me. a planet called Rancoria. And Pretty everyone's sure. a Rancor on Rancoria. Rancors were wrangled mm -hmm. in Dathomir. Oh, that, that might make sense. The, like the Night Sisters had something to do with it. I would much rather talk about do Rancors come from Dathomir where the Night Sisters and the witches are with, you know. You like the, the magical stuff. Darth Maul's origin story about what are they called? What's their race? Uh, oh, what's their race? I used to know it. It sounds like Dathomir. It starts with D. Um, <laughs> then listening to the Trade Federation mm. implications uh, in very racist accents. So, <laughs> well, no one appreciated that. Yeah. So if we're really talking about sort of like, I think the nitty gritty of the, the ins and outs of trade mm -hmm. bogged down what could have been a fantastic story with the prequels. It was a necessary part of it all. Um, and it also really showed the integration of Jedi very well. They're peacekeepers. You know? Yeah. Like they, they had their role. Um, but give me, give me the other side of you it. You want the like, magical stuff. You like the prophecies and like. But I still loved Andor. I right. think it was very necessary. And it was a good. It was a good break. Yeah, I we think. don't need a lightsaber yeah. every single time. Because it can be a little Deus Ex Machina, right? If like you have a character who's super powerful and can move things or make people do things fun. just by waving his hand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like, I mean, the episode 15, Mandalorian, is my favorite Star Wars thing. And it's, you know, Bill Remind Burr's, me what happened uh, Bill Burr character okay. when his second episode. It, like when he came back in season gotcha, two. Gotcha, gotcha. And you've got the whole prison. Retcon. Yeah, the, that whole experience Heist. with the stormtroopers getting the story I wanted Finn to have, basically. Right, right. Where they basically gave 
stormtroopers human elements they tied it into the masklessness of the mandalorian they, they they tied in tons of lore but it was still heightened so i think when you can do a grounded story with heightened elements it's more exciting for me than a heightened story with grounded elements yeah because you can connect to something like there's something like uh stanley always used to say the reason he wrote the characters the way he did was it didn't make sense someone could just fly. Thor had to spin his hammer and launch himself. And like, that doesn't make any more sense. But at least <laughs> right, there's a reason. At least reason. they tried. At least like, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is a thing that makes him fly. Yeah, yeah. To me, this is what I want out of Star Wars is like the hammer makes Thor mm. fly. Well, I don't care. But at least you told me. So, so do, you, that, do you like the midichlorians? I personally don't. I think that it gets mm, rid but of the- But it explains where it comes from. But they don't have any consistency. Yeah, like, they put science in magic. Yeah. And it was like, we we believed the force. We yeah. got it. It Whereas made the, sense. The hammer's just like, if you if you told me the hammer had a certain amount of like magical, L, like pixie dust, nah, I'm out. But like, it's just a hammer you launch. That's the force. Yeah. Got a little magic in it. It's got, it's got, it's got, it's got a got little all father when magic you When you get too it. much into the Bifrost, and all those things, like I speak Marvel, so apologies to all the Star Wars fans that are like, we're not talking about that. But that's Don't bring what, up Bifrost. Don't talk about the other thing Disney owns. But I think that there's an element of uh, that split between familiarity and new, just as there must be between grounded and magic. If it goes too far in either direction, you lose an audience. I also think the more you talk about the ins and outs of like the government system and the Trade Federation, all that kind of stuff, it loses character. It loses that okay. depth that's really important. I think Carl Weathers is the perfect level of reminding us the prequel trilogy's Trade Federation strengths and putting it in something that's more exciting and action packed. Mm. I feel like his character is like, oh, remember when we had all that trade stuff? There's still that here but we're only gonna have him show up for like 10 minutes, do some cool exposition of Boogie. Like I yes. think yeah. that's how you do it. Yes, agree. I feel like both ends of the story that Dave Filoni's trying to tell deal with uh, government changing in a big way and how like a resistance to that builds up, whether it's going from the Republic to the Empire or from the Empire to the New Republic and all the faults and problems that can occur there, right? Because the movies just kind of end like, oh, we blew up the Death Star. We, everyone's clapping, they're cheering on every planet. But it's like, how does everyone even know? I'm like, what about the other dude? Like, yeah. Not everyone's just gonna put down their, their guns and switch over in a second. I will say my favorite, you were talking about your favorite episode yeah. in all the Star Wars world. My favorite part is a book. It's a book written by Claudia Gray called Lost Stars. Oh, and it okay. talks about two, a guy and a girl who grew up on the same very, very small, poor planet and they um, were enlisted into the, the Empire uh, and they were pilots, right? And then one of them blindly followed and was very, very good mm. and was rewarded. Mm. The other one asked questions. And the big catalyst moment was, we just blew up an entire planet. We, uh, we blew up Alderaan for the sake of like, you know, sort of mind torture for a, the princess who we've interacted with before and she's great. Sure. So one of them started asking questions and the other one kept <laughs> following order. And so it was so interesting, but they, they fell in love. So it was so interesting kind of seeing, again, the fallout of these big events mm -hmm. that have happened. The human element. We've seen Alderaan blow up, but what was Alderaan? You know, we can look back into that. But I loved this book and I thought it did such an amazing job. It's almost like the Romeo and Juliet in space. Yeah. yeah, but that's my favorite. Well, it's like the Kevin Smith stuff. Like when he's in Clerks and he's talking about like the day, the day laborers versus the union workers and the Death Star. Like that's so much more interesting. And I think Star Wars has gotten into that sense. I feel like Kevin Smith influenced some conversations at Star Wars because we want those stories told. I want to, I want to be the lawyer that represents the guy when the Death Star was firing who just goes, <laughs> Next to a live yeah. laser beam. That's, that's a tough job. Yeah. That's a tough job. Like, I'd watch that dude got show. fried. He got 50 years taken off his life by being in the proximity of that laser the tractor. But anyway. Mm -hmm. I want to see what the animal rights activists are doing about those little, like, you know, Bible freaks. I don't know how humanoid they are. How sentient are they? They seem pretty trapped. True. I thought there was one Bible freak that worked and, like, was had an But apparently there's a whole bunch of them that there's are all mechanics. Don't feel like that's them. fair. Don't yeah, feel like yeah. that's a, a safe working environment. Business. Is there a union for Bible freaks? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's tough for the people who are in indentured servitude to job of the hut when it's like well there's a lot of there's a lot of futuristic stuff going on why are we why are we, why are we in here? this old system here mm. <laughs> i don't appreciate this also the job is like kenobi kill her for asking questions you owe me eighty thousand credits <laughs> bah, bah, bah. i mean the fallout of leia a diplomat killing um it's tough the the crime lord the crime boss mm -hmm. yeah like how cool is that yeah yeah <laughs> Well, there's, I mean, it's something, you know, Filoni talks about when princess. Uh, princess Leia shows up in Rebels. She's technically, like, working with the Empire at that point. Yeah. She's, like, still faking it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, A New Hope is when she breaks bad, pretty much, when, yeah. uh, you out. know, they capture the ship. And he's like, come on, this is just uh, peaceful. He's like, bullshit. 
Well, and that's the commentary that's interesting, right? These are based on a reality, so we get lessons out of them. All, all stories are to impart morals, and the rebels are rebelling against the known standard government. So if you if you take away that, what's the point? Like, so I think Star Wars should have some morality in it. If it gets too deeply mystic, it might not feel like grounded. Whereas yes. if it gets too deeply political, you don't care. Is there a world where Star Wars can just be like, government's great, no problems there. We've got all that figured out. Propaganda. Now we're just going to tell another story. It's too big. It's too big. For it to not have like a tyranny aspect, mm -hmm. you know, tyrannical aspect in that sense. Uh, especially when you had Palpatine, who no one knew was Sidious, um, who was the biggest puppet master of the whole entire galaxy, pushing his agenda. But then it's like, a, it, from a certain point of view, it really should be the main focus of Star Wars because it's like the people who are working for the Empire truly think they're doing the right thing. The rebels truly think they're doing the right thing. And what are they doing? They're killing a bunch of people as well. So it really, whose side are you on from a certain point of view? Except the fact that Palpatine is pure evil and they had to revolt because the Empire, you know, you pull the curtain back, they're bad. They're bad. I mean, I think it's, shade, it's shades of grey. Yeah. It's shades of grey. Yeah. They're not all bad. They're not some, all they bad. got some good points. They got some great points. <laughs> Let's talk about stakes. <laughs> Let's talk about criteria for stakes. Okay, what are the levels of stakes that we need in death, a show? Death, blood. We want death. Permanence. Permanence. I want this something death. permanent. You know, yes, kill yeah. them. As you talk that about one like- Ewok, That one Ewok died. And that was so brutal. And uh, we all know that that is like, the, I cry every time. When they kind of like roll to the side or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. It's like it's dead. So and he's, like, and yeah. he's actually yeah. dead. We felt the impact right. of that. And I just met him. Dead. I met him recently. And I cared way more about that than someone coming mm. back we've had for 10 movies. Right. Because yeah. there's impact. I met him recently. No, as in he's like saying it as a viewer. Oh. <laughs> like in the movie, we'd only known that guy for like half an hour. No, like we exactly. met him recently and we You don't even know that character's name. I don't know. And I still care. What okay. do I love him from over like you better be walking into this. <laughs> I met him recently. What happened? No, but like I think when you have a character come back over and over again, it loses a lot of that credibility. Sure, sure. And, and like I my most anticipated property, hard stop from Disney, Marvel, DC, anything, one Deadpool 3. But then second is Lando. And Lando is like right next to Deadpool 3 because I know it's gonna be Donald and Stephen Glover writing something that they feel like has to be told yeah. versus something that will sell to be told. So the stakes on that are higher for me because of the creators going, we are going to put our time and effort into this, not because it's going to be commercially whatever, that'll be a side effect, but the stakes to me are creators wanting to sell a story they feel like they have to tell. I feel like Filoni does that. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, the, the Glovers are going to do that. I feel like honestly, Lord and Miller were trying to do that and didn't get to. I want to see Solo. Right, yeah, yeah. what Solo safe. could have been. Ugh. So I feel like those are, the, the stakes for me are the creators telling a story that they feel like they can't not tell. Well, when these events uh, of these shows are often happening in between other major events, which I think is fun because it's to see how we got to this or what the aftermath is of something. But do you need those events? Does that help it matter versus just kind of showing us life in another world? Like, I'm very excited for this Acolyte show because it's going to be so much before mm -hmm. anything we know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not even going to hear Skywalker's name at any no. point. So it's like, I'm, I'm excited to get away from a lot of it. Because sometimes I think it does cut it a little bit. You know, Rogue One was great. But we know what happens after it. And there was kind of a fun element of like, do any of these people survive? Yeah. Or just kind of retire and we never hear about them ever again. I was trying to do a quick kill list in my head of all the characters in Star Wars that mm -hmm. died. And I just Ooh, remember boy. that Anakin killed all the younglings. Yeah. All we the, talked about that order recently. Yeah, they were all dead. Um, yeah. He killed the Tatooine. Uh, sorry, the... The Tusken uh, Raiders. Yeah, he yeah. killed a lot of Tusken Raiders. Tusken Raiders. Women, women children, children. All of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of them. So Anakin, he killed some people on that one planet <laughs> in the got, Kenobi show. I forget what planet it was. He's got blood. That on one his guy head. like broke his neck, and he's just like looking for some everyone, information. Everyone else is nameless, faceless. Nameless, faceless. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Who that was the died? smartest thing they did in the Clone Wars, right? Was be like, oh, all you Jedi, you can just mindlessly chop down these robots mm. uh, who have sentience, Roger, Roger. and we've learned since <laughs> brutal stuff. And then they were also like, also we'll just make up a bunch of clones, so. You kind of feel bad for a second because they're humans, but yeah. there's also like, yeah, they're not real well, humans. They're Jedi, just, Jedi died. That's a commentary. Season. They're just like meat puppets. But how sentient right? are they? That's another whole conversation of like, what is sentience of cloning? Because yeah. like, you know, they're people, technically. They live lives, ish. Ish. So are those stakes invalid because they are the, the copy of a person? But like, who, like what, twins, they live separate lives just because they're the exact same. Like, <laughs> does one matter less? <laughs> no, I think that's... <laughs> 
Yes. To answer that question for you, one matters less. And if you're a twin out there, We're so look at the sorry. other twin and wonder who matters Decide more. which one of you is the lead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but do you like it when a Star Wars show is like, this is the most important moment in the galaxy? Or do you like something like Book of Boba Fett where it's like, yeah, this is just like this city's problem right now. Mm. Uh, is he going to be the Dymo or not? Like, if you're comparing it to do I like something or do I like Book of Boba Fett, <laughs> the answer is always going to be the other thing. <laughs> Apologies to Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Uh, uh, but no, do you, do you want like a bigger story? Do you, do you want a Star Wars series that is, is telling a much smaller story? Would that make you happy? Like if, if Rebels, not live action, I know, but if Rebels was just about these people flying around on a ship and they never got involved with the rebellion, it was just like, hey, this week we got to sell... 500 uh, uh, gas cubes well, so I, that we can get to the planet Blue Far and meet a bunch of boffins. No. And I'll bring up, the, <laughs> bring up the graphic again of the timeline. This kind of answers the question. Every single saga in here mm -hmm. is depicted within a series of events. Mm. So it's not the cushioning between huge events, unless it's solo, but that's just an origin story. Right, right. But like... The big event is your, you know, the Battle of Yavin. So the fact that that's your first movie and that's the precipice right. of the story and it's either happening prior to that or after that, to answer the question, I think Star Wars is important when it is centric around a particular event on that timeline. But if you just want fluff episodes... Um, I just want to see what it's like to live in this universe. Shout out to the late 80s. They had an Ewoks cartoon. Mm -hmm. So there's... There's some fun fluff. Did, Ewok a, died every episode, I believe. This, they just kill off another Ewok that's, every that's episode. That's what made me the killer I am today. <laughs> you got an Ewok rolling around uh, in the opening credits. Uh, she died today. They're, They're like, not another one. Ugh. Maybe really it's our dying. Something. What I would do with Star Wars is have uh, new filmmakers or seasoned filmmakers that have a script that can be turned into an amazing Star Wars story, tell an original story, but then have the built-in IP of Star Wars. So the reason Fast Five is so good is because it's the Brazilian job. It's the sequel to the Italian job they never got to make. So like rewrite something into a canon and make it a, a heartfelt story. Like um, the McConaughey and Mud. I'd love to see like a wise old Jedi. That, that was a deep pull. Yeah, I'm talking Mud. That was a deep pull. I'm gonna pull. go McConaughey and Mud. What Mud if he was a Jedi? Why not? Like I wanna see, uh, what, what's a good movie this year that's like a- I think uh, Qui Gon Jinn was bas basically Grand McConaughey. Blackberry. What if Blackberry is about technology within okay. the Star Wars okay. universe that's about capitalism falling yeah. aggressively because their credits aren't worth anything anymore? What about a show that's about that's yeah. what I want? Glenn Howerton in a Star Wars. Gran Turismo. Pod Gran racing. Turismo. Pod, Pod racing. racing. But it's based on a true uh, Gran Turismo racer that was playing yeah. video games. All yeah. of a sudden, they're like, "This is Pod Racing." Some kids playing N64. A portal opens. Dude, it's like there's also Dude, a I was Pod there. Racing game. There's a Pod Racing game. It's so in our good. Reality. There's already a headcanon. It's so good. And, and Sebulba trains them. Yeah. I played, Voiced by David Harbour. Nice. I played a, a tabletop RPG character and I was a famous pod racer. Oh, in okay. It. And it was so much fun. Fast and Furious in Star Wars mixed with Gran Turismo. Sign me up. It's all about family because Star Wars is all about Skywalkers. It writes itself. Yeah, did they drop the ball on pod racing? Should we have had more pod racing uh, in our Star but Wars? But it's, it's usually prevalent on Tatooine, which is the place <laughs> that you don't, you don't want to go. You don't love. Take me back to that fucking place. <laughs> Um, I played the the pod racing game. They race on a ton of other planets. Also, like Top Gun, like that with, with Tie Fighters and X Wings. Like it's it's all well, right there. They but got rid of my Rogue Squadron movie. Did. That game came out in 1994. It's it called um, Tie Fighter. Twenty years ago, yeah. I was I was very excited okay. for the Patty Jenkins uh, Rogue Squadron movie. Mm. Uh, no, three, I just wanted ago. a Rogue Squadron four. movie. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to that. Could have just Top Gun. Uh, any of this stuff, but in Star Wars. So you sell the, you know, $200 million to make your money back, another $100 million for marketing, write the good stuff and put it in Star Wars. They kind of did that in that, uh, was it Battlefront 2? The storyline was uh, she was a Time Fighter pilot. Yes. And that was kind of fun. Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> the multiplayer kind of was better. That. But then yeah, they yeah. had micro transactions in that. Well, you know, EA, they're going to they're gonna micro transaction you folks. Uh, before we leave. I'm gonna force you guys to rank. Force. Your, your ooh, force. Oh. Uh oh. Just uh -oh. my phone. Uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna rank the live action Star Wars series. Uh, of course, Book of Boba Fett will be at the top of everyone's list. So we got six here. Uh, we 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 separated the Mandalorians into separate seasons. Is it, is it top to bo best to worst? We'll, we'll go best to worst. worst. Great. I think top should always be your top show. Your, okay. No, I'm not finished. Yet. Was, that was not my final was score. Worried. 
Um, we did separate out the Mandalorian seasons. Obviously, it's the only live action Star Wars show that's had multiple seasons so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know we're getting a second season of Andor. Uh, so that, that'll be coming, of that's course. That's it, though. He's done. Well, that <laughs> After is. that, they can make him like a hologram, don't you think? Like, we downloaded your brain into this AI, and then oh. it's revealed that, like, R2-D2 was swapped out with Cassie and Antor at some point. There's a special, special Andor. edition and that Ewok is like a hologram. He's like <laughs> rolling around. Still dying. Still dying. All right, I'm ready. We're showing? Uh, you're right. Who wants to go first between... Uh, my, do you want to rock, paper, scissors again? You got to give it a Star Wars name, like Bunta, Bonto, or Krasnar. Yeah, so go first. Okay, here is my list. Okay, and give us a little reasoning for Coming in. some of your insane takes you're about to make. Right. Okay. Get oh, it. okay. Coming okay. in at number six, The Book of Boba Fett. Sorry, I just didn't mm. think that. It, my problem with Book of Boba Fett is if you have two main protagonists that are exactly the same and neither want to talk and they're both too serious, yeah. it's not fun to watch. Mm. Those two were Fennec and Boba. Same. Oh, I thought you were saying like Din Djarin and, <laughs> and Boba. Yeah, well, that too. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly Fennec, right. I think it's a good point. They it's also why had... Ad Astra didn't work. He was not a fun... Uh, emotion-filled character. There it is. Yeah. You need more pep in your step. You don't. Th- I liked. I liked when he was mad that all the Tuscans got killed, and he was like, well, "I'm gonna go shoot these." I know he. I'm gonna go shoot this gang. Uh, no evidence. I'm just gonna go shoot no, them all. But he integrated with the traditional ways of the Tuscan Raiders. I thought that was fantastic. By just uh, killing indiscriminately. <laughs> it's Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. Next, I have Obi Wan Kenobi. Mm. I thought it had a really strong start, and it didn't stick the landing at all. I thought that there was. It felt rushed to me, and it felt right. like it was a culmination of a lot of pieces that didn't make the puzzle fit. Okay. Uh, season three, I'm starting to see Favreau's uh, story arc. Every episode of every first episode is your monster battle. Every second episode is, you know, it's starting to look oh, okay. incredibly formulated. You've cracked the code. I cracked the code. If Mandalorian season four starts off with a monster battle. <laughs> Because was the mud the mud horn wasn't in episode one of season one, but it was in the second episode, wasn't it? It's at the start. <laughs> it was at the start. Season two, I could change this. I could change this because oh, okay. I saw Koi's answer, and I do think that there was more risk taken, and they got out a little bit more, and Jin became more human. Mm. He had more human elements, which we didn't see in the first one. Uh, next, we have Andor. What a great show! What a great show! It was just show. refreshing. Yeah, we needed this show and I think it actually re-brought back in a lot of Star Wars fans that had kind of written it off because they didn't like the fact that it was Mandalorian was obsessed right. with this little baby yeah. and they just were like no what happened to like the gritty Star Wars that I love that came back in Andor Mandalorian season one I'm a girl I thought Grogu was the best <laughs> he was cute he was stoinking cute it was pretty cute, cute. It, was so pretty cute. cute. it was a good reveal I mean mm-hmm. that was a big Fun reveal. And I think that this is the first time we really saw the Western genre brought to life. Yeah. It was refreshing. The music was fantastic. It was fun. Very different. Like that first couple of episodes of humor, it was just like, wow, again, we needed something like yeah. this. That's my list. Thanks for letting me speak. I can bring you in, Hunt, or I can bring you in cold. Koi, let's take a look at this. Uh, list. Book of Boba Fett, I agree with everything I had to say. And also in that the character didn't feel like the character we left off with. I, it was also really jarring that I feel like Tamora Morrison is a great actor. And I was like, what is happening? Because was it? He was, was it, playing one character, they were writing another, and it, neither of them were Boba Fett that we left off with. Nope. Was it din jarring? It was din jarring. That was good. That was really good. Sorry, really good. I, I no, no, that's perfect for that. Thank you. I, you that deserved. Uh, then I got The Mandalorian Season 3. This is the uh, shocking revelation of loving something really hard, and then, like, I kind of fell off. I watched it casually. I only watched it, like, when I had time. I didn't, okay. like, commit to it. And I felt that everything was kind of predictable, formulaic. I did feel like it was kind of color by numbers. I also didn't feel like... <laughs> It was kind of like, hey, we're all in a cult. That's good. Like, there was not a morality to it. It was like, you know what's great? Cults. Like, I just was really alarmed by them being like, it's good to keep your helmet on and listen to the masses and blindly follow this Boy. zealot creed. Well, both, Boy's coming for the Catholic Church both, next. Both, I, I noticed. I, had, Bo-Katan, I censored myself. Bo-Katan, <laughs> so who was thing. huge in the Clone Wars, I mm-hmm. was petitioned to play a Satine Christ, Bo's older sister, who got, um, got it on with... Ewan McGregor. Ooh. That's the goal. That's the goal. Ooh. Let me have it. She's already dead. But Bo- <laughs> Bo-Katan's whole aim is to kind of get him out of the cult side right. of the Mandalorian. Do you and I didn't find- feel that. Okay. I cool. felt very much like it was like, keep that helmet on. Listen to us. We got rules. And then by the end, like when, when Katie Sackhoff was like, 
the right in the right. It just felt ah. Okay. Uh, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, I felt like there were every other episode. I was enthralled. I enjoyed the fight, but there were certain elements even of the fight that we would built to for so long that like the lightsabers were. It was a weird detail, but the lightsabers weren't animated as cleanly as they were in the movies. Where like when they moved, it wasn't about the striations of light behind them. It was and like some of the glowing on their faces wasn't even accurate. It was just like details that I feel like the movies thrived in they kind of like just dismissed and rushed and then uh rushed like the whole and the, and i didn't love the villain as much as i needed to love her to feel like it was worth having another villain beyond vader like if you're gonna have another villain it's got to be substantial and i felt like they're like but we need a villain and i was like vader's here um and then mandalorian season one i was obsessed with this got me back into star wars it's insane that these two are above it but only because of what i'm about to say about them but this was such a twist with with grogu this was such must watch tv i never thought we'd get a star wars show to the scale much less a must watch tv every yes. week water cooler conversation and that was the strength of the show but Andor is what got me into believing that Star Wars can last forever. So this got me back. This got me believing this can go forever because this was like, oh, what a novelty. This was like, here's my money for a long time. Andor was the political thriller that like the books feel like. It was what I always saw in the details of what Kevin Smith saw Star Wars as. This show felt like how I think people that love Star Wars see Star Wars. And I got in on the on the novel. Like I, I got, like they told me their secrets. Like I felt like I could speak the Rosetta Stone of Star Wars and that was so special. And then finally- oh, One quick point with Andor, I've just realized. Andor was the first Star Wars property that wasn't made for kids inclusively. Yes, they curse. It was for they have adults. sex. Yeah. They do. And like Mandalorian is like, yes, this is, you know, a Western, but also- we've There's kids, there's a bad girl. Let's sell a million of these. Yeah. You know? But Andor was purely like, sorry kids, sit this one out. It's like Dark Knight yeah. with heat. Like you're like, okay, make that for adults yeah. and this was make star wars for adults and i needed that yes and finally uh this as i said earlier is my favorite episode of star war anything it's up there with empire strikes back for me is that episode 15 uh season two i love bill burr's character so much that it actually humanizes all the characters that are in the background like they always joke that if you're a star wars toy you've made it and people can write entire episodes around like wedge antilles this showed me you can like this is a character that you're like you heard me. You Did heard you just me. hand wave away Wedge I, I said, Antilles? give me a Wedge movie because of Mando season two. Wedge is huge, Wedge dude. can be even bigger. Wedge is huge. Cast well and you got me for Wedge, night one. But Mando season two, uh, built on Mando season one, it gave me some of the best weekly guest stars plus long going arcs. It gave me a lot of Star Wars moments that I feel as memorable as the movies. And it showed me not only the growth of Jin, but in Grogu that you can make a character that could be a cheap toy and a sales pitch into an actual arc. Like the, the character, it went from just being adorable to like, oh, that's a character. So I respect it. So Mando season two did the impossible, elevated season one and got me into Star Wars permanently. I don't, with it being 15, there weren't 15 episodes in season two. They just call it 15. 15. Cho yeah, yeah, so yeah. sorry, yeah. That's it's okay. episode 15 of the series. I think that would make it episode seven in season two. There it is. So yeah, Mando. Okay, here's my unhinged take of this whole thing, oh, folks. Oh, I, At the bottom, we got Obi-Wan Kenobi. What a waste, folks. Where's my Darth Maul? Don't put Darth Vader in this show. Put, 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 put Darth Maul in this show. He got show. canceled, that's where it is. It'd have been, oh, the, the actor? Yeah. Okay, well then don't put Darth Maul in this show. Get someone else to do it. I, I don't know. He's got a lot of makeup. Uh, uh, the boy must be trained. They never, they never trained the boy. I cried when we saw little baby Leia. That was adorable, but then, oh my God. Then she mess. ran. What a mess, folks. That's another thing. That was just the same show with Mando. They were just like, what if yeah, you love yeah. this character and they've got a sidekick that's yeah. adorable? Well, I don't know if you've seen uh, the prequels. Oh, it was all like, hey, you like this character? What if they were a baby? Um, Book of Boba Fett. No, thanks. Uh, it kind of started strong, but then, man, they didn't bless you. They did not get off Tatooine. The two Mando episodes slap. That says you everything you need to know about that show. Also, man, go back and watch that finale. The final battle is... Makes no sense. Like, like tactically, when they're in the town and they're like, you go over here and we'll, we'll send them down this road and Cobb Vance shows up and it's like wild stuff. It's like, <laughs> and there's clearly this whole backstory of the mods and Mod I'm Garrett right here, hanging yeah. out, uh, riding around town. Time? But like they cut out. So the ending makes no sense when like, the mods and like the villagers are like, we can work oh, together. And fine. it's like, we don't, we don't know why you even hate each other. Cause you never explained it. Uh, then I go like Mando's up, uh, baby. Uh, like season one was a lot of fun. Season two, ooh, this is really fun. We're having a lot of fun. Luke shows up, maybe I'll cry again. I don't know. I loved Mandalorian wow. season three. It got fun and weird and like religious cults being wacky and everyone's wrong about everything, but they don't care. They're just pushing forward. Love that. And I thought like the space battles in season three were really great. 
Uh, lots of fun there. And then, apologies to Andor. <laughs> we got some live retconning happening in real time. Apologies to Andor, but you're number one, baby. They said shit. They said shit. Shit. Star Wars. They know that word. Uh, you have a, a, a female, tons of female characters with agency mm. doing what they got to do to get through life, which God bless them. Uh, you, you know, she did say fuck the empire, but they bleep it out and made it sound like fight the empire at the end. <laughs> but so much fun. Uh, uh, lots of great stuff. Oh, also Mando season three is up there because Moff Gideon, dude. Uh, uh, just so great. Just yeah. so great. Mm. Moff Gideon, dude. Uh, anyways, Anton. <laughs> uh, this, this is kind of an unfair question, but after two episodes of Ahsoka, where would you kind of put that show? Oh. Right smack me in the middle. I w- yeah, I would put yeah. it in between my Mandos, I think. This is where I'm going with Ahsoka so far. I'm very much enjoying what I saw. I can't wait to see where it goes. Uh, but it ain't no Andor, folks. We've seen a third of it. Right? Or how many are there? There's going to be know? eight episodes. Oh, total. okay. So I think some okay. of the casting is fantastic. Yeah. I think some of the casting is nepotis- nepotism. <laughs> I think, uh, I will say this, I think the villains are really strong yes. based on the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. I'm waiting to see more out of our heroes, but the villains go hard. Yeah, I actually love I, this. I would like the show to just stick with the villains. Uh, love you, Ahsoka, but let's just follow the villains around. Let's You're see right, because I feel like Obi Wan was so heavily focused on sort of Obi's story, yeah, and yeah. the good and little Leia, and I was yeah, like, yeah. "Yay, the good people!" This one, you're just like, I want to know what these villains are up to. What are they up to? Yeah. I want to know what these, these, want these folks are all about. The dark side to tempt us. That's yeah. Exactly what they're about. Also, I'd love a dark side show. I'd love like not having to rely on any one that we've met and just do a Sith show. Can I pitch you one? Pitch us a show. Sith Academy. Teenagers, and it's like out of every single year, two survive. Mm, I like this. Yeah, and that's where you learn. That's where you learn about betrayal. That's when you learn mm, to, yeah. you know, keep giving in to the dark side. And Janelle Foy's. How do? Yeah. I mean, if you want to turn someone to the dark side, send them to high school. That's true. That's the quickest, easiest way to stop believing in humanity mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and to to give in to your feelings, folks. Well, we hope you give in to your feelings every change you get. Uh, that's it for us today. Make sure to subscribe to the Break Room channel right here on YouTube and give us a follow on Twitch where we do these videos live. Big thanks to Koi and Mod for joining us today and giving us their insights on the Star Wars universe. Uh, Ahsoka dropping two episodes this week uh, on Tuesday, so be sure to tune in for that. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Late as gate as. Have a good evening. Hey, Goodbye. Boss,